Hi everybody! It's the end of the month so it's time to show all the pages I got coloured during November of 2023 and I'm just going to jump right in and get started with the first one that I coloured and this one is Day of the Dead colouring book because while I was colouring this one it was actually Day of the Dead so I thought it was pretty fitting to be colouring in this book and this one has a couple of artists cited you can see there Mauro Mazzara and Andrea Bianchi I'm not sure which one actually drew the picture that I coloured because it doesn't say which person drew which picture but this is the picture that we worked on in here and this one is actually on camera as I said it's a two part video this one showing how I did this one with a bit of mixed media going on in there and this one originally had a really busy background with a kind of tile pattern of circles repetitive pattern in the background there that I didn't really feel like colouring at the time I'm like, well most of the time to be honest I don't really like colouring repetitive patterns I went over all that with a couple of coats of the paint pen to block all that out apart from this little bit here which I ended up cutting out and sticking in my own pattern there for the background and you can see there I've cut out the shape and put in my own paper collage in in the background there. You can also see I did a little bit of a marker base for her hair and for her skin. I also used as a base Super Tips as watercolour because this book is one that does take the Super Tips as watercolour where you colour on the page and then go in with the water on the damp brush just to blend out the colours. I used that there for the background for the flowers and for her clothes I think and then went on top of that with pencils for shading as I usually do. Her skin and her hair marker based as I said. I've used some washi tape. We can see that. Some washi tape for the lace effect for her headdress there. And this kind of veil that goes around down the back of her head. For up there that is washi tape. I've stuck on a few stick on crystals on her head there. for On her forehead and on her nose. Little yellow ones and little pink ones for the skull there. For a bit of extra decoration as David Dead is known for being very kind of Gordy, I would say, clashing colours, really fun. I do love it. I love Day of the Dead, and yeah, she was super fun to colour. The background, as I said here, I cut out the space and ended up sticking in my own paper, which is this kind of vintage sepia toned sort of paper that I had, collage paper, with it like a giant rose was drawn on it, and I thought that would go in quite well with the roses she's got in her hair. And yeah, I ended up going with this yellow, pink, and blue colour scheme, which I think I've used a couple of times this month, but yeah, that seemed to fit in quite well. Although I was torn between doing this kind of pastel colour scheme or a more gothy one with black and red and gold and I went with this one in the end which was more fun I think so yeah I really did enjoy painting that one and that one is actually on video if anybody is interested in watching that but yeah that is the one that I coloured from a Day of the Dead colouring book Next we have the Floral Fairies colouring book. This is a Dover colouring book by Carol Craig. As my theme for the month was poppies. So I did try and actually colour a few pictures of poppies and this is one of them. This is the Floral Fairies as I said and this is the California poppy that I ended up colouring and I printed her out onto my own paper there because as you can see it is a double sided book and I wanted to use alcohol markers so I printed her out onto my own paper. And there we go. And for this one, as I said, yeah, alcohol markers there as a base for, I would say pretty much all of it, but yeah, all of it as a marker base. And I was playing with using the colourless blender to try and get a few effects going on because I wanted to figure out a way to try and use those instead of just leaving them in the marker bag, just wasting away in the marker bag without any use being gotten out of them. And I have been having fun playing with those lately. So yeah, I did make a video on how I did this background using the colourless blender to make that kind of bouquet effect in the background there. Yeah, with the little circles drawn with the colourless blender, a little bit of pencil shading on top of that. And that, that was one of the videos that I made with this picture this month. And the other one was for a video showing how I use the white gel pen. So yeah, there is a lot of kind of excessive white gel pen used on this one. So I could make that video and show you all the techniques that I use. Um, I used it for going around the outlines of these white flowers here. I used it for giving the fairy herself a bit of a white outline to make her stand out from the background. Um, there's little fairy sparkles around her wings as well. And of course my usual, my usual highlight, especially in the hair. I have added a little bit of glitter on her wings. That's a Dovecraft glitter glue, that one. And I think that colour's called Crystal, kind of a clear one. But everything else, yeah, mainly the marker base with pencil shading apart from a dress which is just the pencils trying to get a kind of gradation 
or gradient going up her dress from the pink and the yellow to the white. Because when I did look up the California poppies online, I was expecting red because poppies, yeah, they're red flowers. But no, the California poppies, they seem to come in um, more frequently, the white, the pink and the yellow. So that's what I ran with. I thought I could work with that. And I wanted her to represent the poppies to have the three colours as a gradient going down her dress, which, yeah, give me a chance to practice my blending skills as well. So that was really good. And um, there's some gold gel pen I think I've used as well. But mainly the, the markers with the pencil shading on that one, yeah, and I was really happy with this, this effect in the background. It was really quite a quick way to get a kind of bokeh effect background going on, so yeah, that's one that I will use again, I think. I might have used it, yeah, I did use it again this month, actually, that kind of bokeh effect. So yeah, I'm going to keep that one kind of tucked away as something I can use for backgrounds. And yeah, I'm really quite happy with how she turned out. And there we go, that one is from Floral Fairies Coloring Book by Carol Craig. Next we're moving on to Mythic World by Kirby Rosannes or Rosannes. And this one was a colour along with Colouring Bumblebee here on YouTube. I will link her channel down below. But I don't think she's actually finished her version yet, so I can't show you hers, unfortunately. Um, if she does finish before this video goes out, then I will pop it in so you can see. But otherwise, I will show both pictures again next month. I think that's only fair. Show both pictures next month and you can see how we've both coped with this one. But the page that we chose to do a colour along with, a bit of a body colour... It was this one here, the Moon Rabbit. Both of our favourite ones, I think, from this book. There's a couple that I really want to colour, but yeah, this was one of my favourites. I did pick this one out to be coloured sometime in January when I was doing my rabbits as a theme for Year of the Rabbit. I never got around to it, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I love the colour scheme I've got going on. It was kind of based on a traditional like um, Asian, Japanese, Chinese art with the black and the red being used. I did bring in some gold as well. And even though this is a double-sided book, I did end up using my markers. As you can see, I sacrificed this one on the back here because these ones were not my favourite. I do love pretty much every page in this book, but these two, yeah, I can really say those are not my favourite and not one of the ones I would be colouring first. So I went in with the markers to have a bit of fun with this one and most of it does have a marker base with the pencil shading you can see I've got some stick on crystals there again I do love using my stick on crystals for my clouds yep the clouds is a metallic kind of pink metallic pink watercolour I'm not sure if I can make that show up yeah there we go a little bit of a metallic pink watercolour I've gone around the edges of the clouds with the gold gel pen there the rabbit uh, has a coat he's Painted all over with the white drawing ink, the Winsor & Newton white drawing ink, and then he has a coat of iridescent medium. And this stuff here, which I find really nice to go over white to give it a kind of shimmer, a bit of a sheen to it. I'm not sure if it will show up on camera because it is really quite subtle, but yeah, my little bunny is shiny. Um, the moon is red watercolour. Uh, with a little bit of pencil shading on top, I think. A little bit of white gel pen for some cross hatching there. The lady herself has the marker base with the pencil shading on top. The pink kind of floral pattern on her robe, that is washi tape. Um, what else did I use? Oh yeah, I've used <laughs> this glitter on the lantern, which I, again, I'm not sure I will be able to show, but that is actually glitter nail polish that I tried to put on there to give a little bit of a, a glittery effect to that lantern, make it try and stand out a little bit. The flowers I did I, with the white ink again, just to cover all the, all the line art there, and then I went over the top with this silver gel pen to pick out the edges. And the background... I'm not sure if it'll be showing yet. It's showing there. That's painted with the instant coffee, another technique that I really love to use and uh, to give paper a kind of all parchment sort of style effect. It's not showing up super well, I don't think, but yeah, the background maybe it will work when I put it down. You can see, especially in this corner, the background is painted with the instant coffee, sprinkle a few little grounds or um, granules on there to give the kind of speckled effect of kind of old parchment which I thought really worked to, to again go with the ancient kind of Asian painting, ink painting effect that I was really going for and yeah I do love that that colour scheme it's really rich and uh, kind of minimalist I guess but yeah I really love how that one turned out yeah so that one was another fun one to do and that one is from Mythic World by Kirby Rosannes or Rosannes 
Next I moved on to, this is Ladies of Leisure 2 by Zan von Zed. And for this one, I gave myself a little bit of a challenge for this one. There she is, this one is another video on the channel showing how I coped with colouring this lady here. And for this one, as I said, a little bit of a challenge because my other half, he went out shopping to Asda's here in the UK, one of the big supermarkets, and he came back and he brought me some Crayola crayons, Colours of the World crayons, and some Asda's own brand, just supermarket brand, fibre tip pens. And he said, here you go, these were on sale and I know you love art supplies. And I was like, oh, yay. And I decided to try and colour one picture just using those two art supplies, which worked out a lot more difficult than I did anticipate, especially with the crayons crayons trying to get a nice smooth skin tone. I think maybe I should have gone for a bigger picture and just kind of embraced the kind of roughness of the crayons, give it tried to give a more kind of oil pastel sort of effect, more arty I suppose. But I tried to make her skin really smooth and it was a struggle. But I did end up with loads of nice tips for using crayons in the comments for that video. So thank you for everyone who's left tips. I will be trying that again. Trying out the different solvents and ways ways of blending crayons. That was really nice of you to be leaving those tips. I am super grateful to that. But in the end, after a lot of work, I did manage to give her quite a nice skin tone that I ended up being quite happy with. And the pens I used as watercolour by scribbling on a plate and just painting them on as watercolour but this is Amazon paper and it is British Amazon paper so yeah not the best as I found out they're made in Great Britain Amazon paper yeah not the best to be working with so that has wrinkled quite a lot you can probably hear the yeah the paper being really wrinkled there you can see the paper being really wrinkled there to be honest at the bottom I did leave it under a few heavy books and this is the best that I've gotten it so far so yeah don't be using um, watercolour or any water mediums on the British Amazon paper unless you're yeah unless you don't really mind the paper wrinkling up and giving you that kind of effect but all in all I was fairly happy with how she turned out even though it was a little bit of a, scr a struggle. Again quite the minimalist colour scheme and um, because these stalks those stalks and seed pods in the background I figured they were poppies they look kind of like poppy seed pods to me so that's what I went with and because those were just the seed pods and there wouldn't be any red um, like the poppy flower red and black in the seed pod background I put the red and the black into the lady herself um, instead of the background I just made the background really kind of sketchy and made it fade into the background made the lady herself be the focal point with the that is supposed to be a lot brighter reds but yeah I'm going to leave it as is because of the whole point of just using the two art supplies I'm going to leave it as is and uh, yeah go with that and yeah she didn't turn out too badly considering the limited art supplies I was using, just the kids' art supplies of the, the felt pens and the crayons. So yeah, that's how she turned out. And as I said, that one is a video on the channel. It was a bit of an experiment, a bit of an interesting experiment, I should say. And yeah, I did learn quite a lot and I'm quite eager to try out the tips on blending the crayons. So yep, yeah, she's kind of a little valuable lesson there. And that one is from Ladies of Leisure 2 by Zan von Zed. The next one is from Gods and Goddesses Special Colouring Heaven by Jash Lee. And this one is also a video on the channel. This is Hypno. Try and get them all on camera. This is Hypno, the God of Sleep. And for him, I wanted to try and colour a picture using only the markers. For the most part, I mean, this is me, I can't do anything with only one art supply, I always bring in something else. But yeah, I tried for the most part just to use my alcohol markers, the Ahuhu alcohol markers. And I did show in a video how I coloured the poppies just using the Ahuhu markers. And we can see in the background there. Again, I went for the, the kind of bokeh effect using the, the uh, uh, colourless blender for the alcohol markers. And yeah, I went in with a couple of shades of marker, used the colourless blender and there are some, it's not showing up too well, but there are some gold, little gold spots on there with gold sharpie as well. I ended up using the gold sharpie to go around the edge of the image as well because yeah, it got a little bit messy over the edges with using the colourless blender on top of the ink there to kind of dissolve it out and it was bleeding a little bit over the edges so I went around with the gold sharpie. He's got stick on jewels. <laughs> yeah, stick on jewels again. I do love to use those. There we go, glittering in his hair. He's got some actual glitter there. That is Dovecraft glitter glue for his top because there was some sort of intricate pattern there. And I, yeah, 
<laughs> I'm not much of a one for colouring intricate patterns, so he's got um, red and glittery now. The rest of him as well, just the alcohol markers and using the blender to try and get these highlights along the edges there. I did use some paper collage for his cape or cloak there on the background. That was where I cut out the shape and actually stuck the paper behind. I just shaded it on top a little bit with markers. I think I shaded that with the markers on top. Gold Sharpie again for his cloak. Yep, lots of white gel pen. <laughs> Bit of glitter glue and some stick-on crystals. So yeah, I couldn't just stick to the markers even though I did try very hard. But there we go, that is Hypnos, The God of Sleep by Josh Lee. And that is from Gods and Goddesses Special Colouring Heaven. Next we're moving on to Tanglewood by Jessica Palmer. And for those of you who don't know, this is a book that I picked up in a charity shop at the beginning of the year and it was in really quite bad shape. It had a really bad life, <laughs> really hard life. Been loved, well loved I think is the way we say it. And uh, a lot of pages had been started and they were in pretty bad shape and I wanted to get the book and try and fix the whole thing up make it my own, give my own little touch to the pages, see if I could fix them in inverted commas. So this, this page I'm going to show you first was one of the worst pages in the book and I'll pop a picture up here of what it looked like before I started going into it. As you can see it was ripped, um, almost coming out of the book down the middle there, there's a big old rib going up through the middle of it and most of it had been started to be coloured with gel pens I think it was, either gel pens or some sort of acrylic. And yeah, that one was going to be one of the biggest challenges to be fixing up. But I did go into it and see what I could do. And most of this one is also on camera. I did end up going back in and finishing off the other side as well. But this side of the page is on camera. Painting that pheasant there. But originally this page was ripped along here, I think. So the first thing I had to do was go in with masking tape. <laughs> you can see on the back there, I had to masking tape the page back into the book for a start and uh, to hide all that I went, I still haven't trimmed that, I had to go over with scrapbooking paper and stick those on and I was trying to go for sort of a, a journal, scrapbook, sort of nature diary, sketchbook kind of thing, I, I hope you know what I'm on about, um, I think yeah more, more of a sketchbook than anything is what it ended up looking like but yeah I'm super happy with it. Um, I stuck all the paper down as I said, this was parchment paper that I just cut to cut to shape and stuck in there and freehand drew in these feathers, added white gel pen and gold gel pen, this uh, text here that's copied off of Wikipedia and just stained with coffee, with instant coffee with a few little granules or grains sprinkled onto it to get the nice speckled effects the butterfly and the flower, those, oh and this little, this little round thing here, those were all cut out of scrap paper, scrapbooking paper and stuck on to try and fill the page up and give it more of that sketchbooky, lots of stuff going on kind of effect, which I hoped would hide any little imperfections that might be going on there with my painting as I'm not the neatest painter in the world, I have said a few times. I added in these little pheasant footprints right around the edges of the gold, the gold gouache there painted over the pheasant which luckily I did test the gel pen here with a little bit of water beforehand to see if it would take the gouache paint on top and it didn't dissolve or anything so yeah we went with that and just painted over him with gouache. I have splashed on a few bits of gold and a few bits of the instant coffee onto the background to again go for the vintage theme which seemed to be something I was quite into this month. So yeah I was really happy with how that page turned out. And for the opposite page, which was kind of untouched, and uh, originally I was thinking maybe to leave this bird as the line drawing, kind of zen tangly line drawing of a pheasant there, but I couldn't really figure out how to do that with the black pen and still have it looking good, so again I went in with the gouache paint, but this time just using black and white to make him look as if he's kind of grayscale, which I think worked really well, like all in all. The feather, I just went round the edges with the gold gel pen. This feather was originally all zentangly on the inside, so what I did, I just went over the top with the white gouache, whited out all that zentangle pattern in the middle and just drew in a few feather lines to make it look a bit more like the feather up at the top. And then a bit of gold gel pen, yeah, and around the edges with the gold gouache like I did with the footprints on the other page. And yeah, I think that works really well, as making it look as 
kind of a vintage sketchbook, I suppose. This is what it looks like more than anything, but I'm sure you all get the kind of idea, the kind of vibe I was going for with that one. And I, yeah, I'm super pleased with how that turned out compared to how it looked like at first. <laughs> and I did actually go on and finish off another double page spread in here. So I'll just, yep, yeah, so I can show you a, a screen grab of what this one looked like before I went into it. And this one actually had a page missing down the middle, so we had two halves of two different pages going on there. My task for this one was to try and make them gel together, turn it into a proper two-page spread and not two different, completely different pages on different sides of this one. So yeah, that's how it looked like at first. So there was no colouring originally on it, I was just dealing with making it look like a cohesive two-page spread. And here we go, this is how we've ended up with this one. And yeah, again, really happy with it. So how I coped with this one, I stuck in a piece of uh, the brown paper. It's not tone tan or anything like that. It's just brown paper from a sketchbook that I had with three different tones of paper in it. And I drew in, um, originally there was kind of a, a bendy sort of swirly tree there but I wanted to match it more closely with this side of the page so I drew in with a black fine liner my own kind of version of this sort of tree added in the leaves a few berries to make it look more like this side of the page and then I shaded it with the black fine liner just did a bit of cross hatching went in with white gel pen and white pencil on top of that brown paper and then as I came over to this side I shaded with a brown pencil I added in, again because I had the gouache paint out from doing the pheasants earlier, the background I added in with the gouache paint. I did a, a little bit of spattering to add a bit of interest in the background there. It was a little bit bare, but I didn't really want to add anything crazy into the background because the bird is what I wanted to be standing out. And I think, uh, yeah, I've really gone with that as well. And he was a little zentangly kind of bird there. And again, gouache paint. <laughs> gouache paint will cover a lot, so I went over him with the gouache paint and originally I was going to try and make him sort of a galaxy, but I ended up just sticking with the blues and uh, yeah, gave him the little uh, stars, the white speckles for stars to make him look like a little starry night. There are a few gold gel pen spots in the background as well, I'm not entirely sure they'll be showing up. There is a bit of gel pen in the tree as well with the gold bit on the bird for his legs and his beak so yeah again really pleased with how that turned out I think again going for the sort of vintage sketchbook I think probably that's what the whole book will end up looking like to be honest with me going in and just playing and because the book was basically wrecked in the first place I don't think there's much I can do to make it a lot worse so I think it will be for a lot of experimenting in this book to see what I can make work and that one I have yeah, we succeeded with, I think. I'm super happy with how he's turned out. I have been working on the page. Yeah, the next page as well. And basically there wasn't much wrong with this one apart from the page falling out of the book. And there was a big old gap here with nothing on the page and I couldn't think of what to do. But in the end, again, scrapbooking paper. This one had kind of a wallpapery sort of pattern to it. So I stuck that down around the edges to give a bit of interest on that side of the page. And my plan is to keep going with the black and white for this pattern and add in a few big kind of bold patches of colour like, like what's going on with this paper here. I have drawn out with uh, pencil lines. Yeah, you can see where I'm planning on maybe putting some patches of green there to see if I can make that work for the leaves. Maybe blue for the, for the flower there. And yeah, that one is coming along but I still haven't... <laughs> I haven't finished that one but I'm showing just to show that I am working on this project I have got different things going on with it and yeah it's, it's, it's super fun because I do love to go back into and work into secondhand pages so yeah I really am enjoying it I think my problem will be to go in and colour the pages the normal pages afterwards because I'm having so much fun fixing all these ones that yeah will I be able to go in and colour the normal ones yeah, maybe I can just make it my challenge to deal with the zentangly kind of doodly stuff because it's it's usually not my thing. But yeah, I am really enjoying working in that one. And that one is Tanglewood by Jessica Palmer. And last but not least, here we go everybody. I bit the bullet and I bought a new copy of Moon Valley because if anybody has seen my book collection videos or my um, books I bought this year video, I think I did. I bought a German copy of Moon Valley by Maria Troller and the paper was absolutely terrible <laughs> I couldn't hardly work in there at all I couldn't make anything work in there 
and uh, in the end I gave up. So yeah, I'll be able to work in this one with the um, with all the different methods that wouldn't work in the other book, but I do have the other book that I'll be able to use markers in or do a bit more experimental stuff in. So yeah, I think it's all worked out pretty well. I'm going to keep this one for, for nice. It did actually come secondhand, so there is a page already coloured that I might go back in and rework. This page was already coloured. I might actually go in and rework that one at some point, but the one that I coloured in here, again going with my poppy theme for the month, is this one. And yeah, again, I've gone for the vintage kind of theme here. As you can see, this one is poppies. And with this one, I was going for a vintage -y kind of colour palette to start with for the flowers. You can see they're not exactly the bright red that you expect with poppies. I've brought in the pink and the kind of yellowy colour to tone that down and make it more vintage -y, faded sort of colours, which I thought would work quite well. And I didn't fancy colouring the whole background so I drew in this square in the middle and originally I was thinking to maybe make that blue with watercolour or something but when I'd finished it all I thought yeah the blue would really take away from what I've already done with all those kind of desaturated colours and really kind of faded as I said vintage kind of effect I had going on again I painted the background with the coffee which never wants to show up on camera I didn't go too crazy with um, dropping down the grains and granules this time. I just wanted the kind of off-white, kind of yellowy brown colour to come through in the background, give the paper that kind of aged effect. And once I'd done that, I thought it looked like a really old vintage kind of postcard. So I ran with it. <laughs> I ran with it. I wrote, uh, I drew, a, drew some lines, did some lettering in there, did it with the, the gold gel pen. I went round it with the fine liner and I put in some of the lines here which is where if it was a postcard you would be doing your writing on those little lines in the bottom there and, and yeah I thought maybe that went quite well with the effect and I ended up <laughs> with a kind of pencil line down here I have no idea how it got there to be honest with you I ended but I ended up with a pencil line down here and I thought yeah well, I'll just work that in so I tried to make it look as if it's kind of old and creased uh, I'm not entirely sure I got it looking completely right, but I added in a few few little creases. I thought maybe it would look a little bit old and worn and vintage. And there we go. That's how I've coped with that one there. And yeah, the paper in this one, a heck of a lot better, I will have to say. It was taking the... Um, the coffee kind of wet medium really well. It was a lot easier to layer with the pencils. I think that that was the brute funner pencils actually, not the black barreled ones, just the, the quite old brute funners. I got there is some glitter on the fairy wings. Yeah, again that's the Dovecraft glitter glue. So yeah, that's the one that I coloured. That's the one that I coloured in Moon Valley by Maria Troller. And those are all the pictures that I coloured this month. I did do a drawing though, which I haven't got around to colouring in there yet, but I will show in case anybody's interested in seeing what I've been up to with my drawing this month. And I drew this guy here, who is actually one of the characters that I'm playing in Dungeons and Dragons at the moment. <laughs> this is my character. I felt the need to be drawing him. And yep, yeah, there he is. This is Donnelly, my druid with his fancy hat and his horns. And yeah, I think I might be colouring him at some point. He ended up looking really fun and I was really pleased with how he turned out. So I'm probably going to be colouring him, I think. Yeah, super happy with how he turned out. And uh, it's nice to be back drawing again, actually, because it has been quite a while since I've actually done any drawing. And this month I suddenly felt that, like, yeah, I need to be drawing. So I'm going to draw my dude. And there he is. That is what I managed to get done this month. And that is every all the work that I did manage to do this month. Um, my theme was poppies this month, as I said. And next month I was undecided on what my theme was going to be. But I think because it's Christmas... And because I do have quite a lot of ideas kind of floating through my head at the minute of things I want to try out, pages I want to colour that haven't fitted into any of my themes this year, stuff I want to try out, as I said, a couple of supplies I want to try out. I did manage to get hold of some Inktense pencils that I'd like to try out, but I need to find a good page to try those on. Just basically a few things that I want to do that I haven't really been able to fit into any of my themes so far. So yeah, for December, my theme is basically a free-for-all. I'm going to just try and get out all the ideas I've got in my head, colour whatever I feel like colouring, 
And there probably won't be too many Christmassy themed pictures because that's not really something I gravitate towards colouring, but I'll try to throw a couple in there, probably more along the alternative Christmas side of things. Um, the same as last year, the more kind of alternative, not so cutesy Christmas pictures. If I can find a few of those that I feel like colouring, I'll throw those in. But for, for the whole, I think for December, it will be whatever I feel like it, whatever ideas that I want to try out and haven't really been able to so far, then I'll go for that. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed looking back at everything I managed to do in November. So take care, everybody. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in future videos. Bye.